Uh, Ronald, first of all, overall, how do you feel the transfer window went for the club? Uh, ah, overall, uh, positive. Because we uh, we signed uh, from the start of the season some good players. Like Stekelenburg, the goalkeeper, uh, Williams, uh, Idrissa, Kana, Idrissa. Bolassi, Valencia. I think that's... Uh, that's really positive. Of course, we had a, a disappointment on uh, on the last day, but that 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 happened in in football. But because you don't get always what you like to have, and uh, and that was not in our hands in uh, the player Sissoko. Okay, he, he he chose finally for a different option, but okay. I can I can't uh, say anything against the club, the board, the chairman, because he did everything to to get the player. In terms of that, then his representatives, it seems, gave every indication that he wanted to come to Everton. So, how do you feel that they conducted themselves, the players' representatives, and Sissoko himself? Oh, out out of my position, uh, that's difficult because I did not uh, the business at uh, this this. I did not the meeting with his agents, but of course from outside, it was difficult. Uh, I spoke to the player. I think it was ten days before the last day of the window, and then the player showed his interest in coming to Everton. And then, okay, finally, uh, everybody knows what happened. How did it play out through the day from your perspective as well? Was it a difficult situation to be involved with? Yeah, it's always difficult because you expect. I think that was the player for us. What what we need at that moment, and 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 that that one. Then the picture was totally perfect. But still, without that player, uh, the picture is 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 very good. I said, though, uh, there's still lessons to be learned, Ronald, as well in terms of getting those targets over the line. Yeah, but it's also. Uh, I think now. Uh, it was for everybody, I think, uh, more difficult than 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 ever to sign players about uh, the, the the money, about the salaries, about uh, the agents. Uh, you can be the the agent of uh, everybody in football, and and and, and not uh, the most are very good people and uh, difficult. Uh, it's all about money. And sometimes it uh, makes uh, the business very difficult. And uh, but that's that's for Everton. But I think it's uh, overall uh, a difficult time because if you see what happened on the last day, that clubs uh, signing players, uh, doing uh, big transfers. Yeah, you can ask why why today and why not three weeks ago. But everybody likes to have the the squad arranged by start of the season, but it's not like uh, it was before. Is the problem as well in, in some respects that you're looking at players who are wanting Champions League football, you're going for that higher calibre of players and at the moment you can't offer them that? Yeah, that's that's true. I had that, uh, I have that experience when I was in Southampton and, and, and it's always difficult uh, what you like to to show to them that that they can develop and, and the club is growing uh, the club likes to win titles and that's not done in 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 one year that that needs time and and and, and it's all up uh, to this season how we perform because if we reach europe and that's that's our challenge uh, then then will be more easy to get these kind of players. As well as the players that you've brought in, you've been able to keep hold of Romelu Lukaku as well. He said this week that it wasn't the right time to move on. So what do you expect from him this season and, and what can you do for Romelu himself? Yeah, I, I expect a lot because he's uh, a very good player. He's still 23 and he knows that he can uh, improve, that he needs uh, to develop himself and then the technical staff is, is is that support for the boy to uh, to make the uh, Romelu a better player and uh, and of course it's uh, it's an important player because it's normally 
the top scorer of the team and uh, he showed that with the Belgium uh, national team last uh, Wednesday or Tuesday it was and, and, and I hope he will uh, score his next uh, next Monday. I think it makes a difference though as well. He needed that those two goals. Ah, that is always always strikers needs. They need goals uh, for have totally the confidence. But uh, don't forget, he had a difficult preseason. Uh, he was coming late in, and and I think now he is close by by his his best perform, and 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 we will see that. You do have another option now in Anna Valencia as well. What do you expect him to bring? Yeah, he, to bring that competition, what, what all the players need. Now, with including Valencia, we have seven strikers uh, for the three uh, front positions in the team. And uh, you need that. It's a long season. It's a difficult season. And they need to give competition. And uh, in my opinion, the best... <laughs> 11 they start and uh, and they need to accept and they need to fight for for the best chance to play and a start well in english football do you think we just maybe needed a move to get away from west ham just to to kick start things again yes i i i, I can't uh, say anything about uh, what what his situation was in west ham the boy was interesting in, in to come to everton uh, we were interested in in valencia already earlier on uh, he was one of the options uh, to get in a new front player. And uh, okay, and we know he can play like a nine, he can play behind the striker. He with different options with Enner in front, and uh, that's good to have it. Any chance of Nias or any of the other strikers maybe going out on an emergency loan as well? Has there been any interest there? No, they know, they know <laughs> they can go on loan, but okay. Maybe we need to wait now till, uh, till January. How are you looking squad wise? As well ahead of this game, normally. Good. I'm. I'm happy. Um, I'm happy about uh, the signings. I'm happy about the squad. What we have uh, at the moment, and, and okay, it's keep going and keep fighting, and, and, and we need a spirit. And uh, of course, uh, the training is a little bit different than they used to do, and that that needs time. But what I saw this morning was very positive. Everybody with a lot of came back with a lot of energy, and and and. and to show the qualities and uh, okay, make it difficult for the manager. That's the best what uh, what uh, the manager like to have. Playing a few days later, does it give Anna a chance as well? He's not back yet, is he? No, it's n it's not bad after uh, the international duty to get one or two days more because that really uh, give the players the time to uh, to recover from uh, traveling, from playing. Monday is a little bit strange to play football but okay it's it's one time this season for us and okay after Monday it's the last <laughs> uh, just checking as well I take it Seamus has come through with no problems after playing yeah it was okay it was uh, also a little bit tricky <laughs> because he was out for for around four weeks and he had some training sessions and uh, it's always difficult for the player because he's his position is between the club between the national team but he was fit to play and uh, okay and he came back without any reaction and he's fit uh, to start McCarthy cleverly Gibson uh, Gibson and, and McCarthy uh, McCarthy had a, a grown surgery he will be out for three weeks the same like Gibson and cleverly normally will uh, from Saturday will be part of uh, of the group and just as you're facing David Moyes who made it such an impact here in, in terms of t turning Everton into a, a side that was regularly challenge, challenging for Europe. Is, is that something you can you can see him maybe doing with Sunderland? I think it's more difficult uh, at the moment, eh, at the moment for Sunderland than what he did uh, by Everton. And with Everton, I think he had a great time. He showed uh, being a great manager for Everton in, in, in all the years that he was uh, managing Everton. Sunderland is uh, a different club uh, the last few years struggling uh, but okay uh, what he said by himself that that about relegation but it's also a club who signed new players and uh, the team will be different than it was two weeks ago and, and it's a difficult one and but okay we need to be prepared for that and for you if the objectives of this club change is it more than 
just challenging for those European spots? Yes, of course. Uh, it's to put a little bit of pressure to everybody, and, and Everton needs to be a team who who fight for Europe. And I think we have the squad available at the moment to to do that. And uh, the start is okay, but now we need to continue. Well, just how frustrating is the international break? Because you you get your squad together, whether you're 100% happy or not, you know that's it, and then you have to wait. Yeah, that's always a little bit, but that's that's for every manager. Sometimes it's 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 a nice break, and sometimes maybe you like to have the players available for for training, new players. Uh, but okay, uh, that's good that we play on Monday. That that gives us uh, two days more of training, and we need that to be prepared for for Monday. So, how happy are you with your squad? I'm very happy, of course. Uh, disappointed about the last, uh, about the last option, the, our last target. But uh, but overall happy because uh, the club did really a good job in the transfer window, and uh, the team is stronger than it was, in my opinion. And now it's uh, that we need to show that. You said something interesting after the Spurs game. You said my team's about 70% fit. How do you see them now? No, better, better. Physically wise, uh, better than it was. Uh, but still, we need time. But uh, it's not excuse to not to win because uh, we are ready. But I think the the load bearing capacity can be better, and that's in general. But they're working hard, and that needs time to to improve uh, in that aspect. Yeah, last Friday. Oh. Yeah. Um, I was looking a lot just out of uh, Ross Barkley. What, what did you make of the fact that he was left out of the, uh, the England squad? That was quite a lot of surprise about him. Yeah, but okay. Uh, let's talk about uh, Everton because uh, we're now behind uh, after the international duty. And uh, what he needs to do is uh, to play good football, to show his qualities, and uh, and to show the the, the big Sam every weekend that uh, he needs to select a player and that's the best answer for the player by himself are there any players that surprise you Ross, since you've arrived you've been particularly impressed by no i'm impressed by uh, the whole spirit in the team uh, in, of course i think the, the new signings what we brought in uh, showed a, a very fast adaptation to the team to the rest of the players and uh, it's not one particularly to put out or to take out of, of the rest, but I think overall it's very good. And just on the game, Ronald, uh, again, um, not an easy start for Sunderland, but in Jermaine Defoe they've got a striker who can really get them out of a, a tricky situation. He's going to have to be uh, watched very carefully. Yes, we know. Uh, that's one of uh, his best qualities. <laughs> it's maybe not... Uh, that number nine who played and who, who gave the team uh, the wrist to come and to play, but uh, one of his qualities is he's so dangerous. He's always, always his movements behind the defenders. If there is space and, and yeah, a chance normally is a goal. And uh, of course, uh, we need to uh, prepare uh, for him because he's still showing his, uh, his his productivity as as a striker and uh, but okay it's not only the foe uh, if we stop the midfielders uh, in in passing to the foe then then you c don't get that problem. Okay, thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you, Ronald. Just do a couple of these lads here. Okay, guys, thank you.